Today I'm answering your questions. A number of you have been commenting, uh, sending me messages over the last number of months. And I thought, you know, today would be a good opportunity for uh, some of you who don't really know a whole lot about my running. And so I thought I'd share some of that with you. Today's a Q and A day. I'm gonna answer a number of your questions that have been coming in over the span of the last year. There's been quite a few of you who have just found my channel for the first time. How did you start running? Well, I started running primarily because I was a little scared of where my health was going. I had a, a health scare. My blood pressure was about 170 over 125. I was a little scared, uh, just to say the least. She didn't let me leave the doctor's office until she had a talk with me to say, hey, we need to do something about this. And I was like, I don't want to be put on any medication. What are you talking about? I've been healthy for a long time. I don't, I don't need medication. So she said, look, why don't you take the time to do it on your own since you're very adamant that you can do it and bring that, uh, bring that number down. So I did. I mean, I was, you know, I didn't know where it was all going to go, but I basically said, look, I don't want to be on medication. That's not the way I want to go. It's not the way I, I want to live. I want to fix the root cause. I don't want to just artificially fix or artificially put a band-aid on something that could actually be fixed because I knew it could be fixed. I was getting close to type 2 diabetes as well. And I was, like I said, about 100 pounds overweight. Blood pressure was through the roof. I was very unhappy, very depressed, very, I don't know, just down. And it was not a, a good feeling. You know, my dad had uh, passed away a year before that and you know I was really just dragging myself through the motion just to get through the day to be quite honest so that was like the beginning of you know having to change my uh, change my lifestyle and uh, it took a little bit for me to figure out how I was going to do it but that's essentially kind of how it started why do you talk about heart rate so much the reason I talk about heart rate training so much is I know it works I find it a very enjoyable way to train Look, I'm no Olympic athlete. I'm a recreational runner. I like to run in the odd race every now and then, but I just really want to keep my weight down. I want to stay happy and healthy. I want to, you know, make my heart stronger. These are just things I, I want. And I know that training by heart rate, I actually get faster at the same heart rate and I don't have to put out as much, you know, energy and run so fast and, you know, have all those chances of getting injured. I, I just like the the low steady build of my aerobic base. Now in the beginning, it wasn't so much fun. I actually didn't enjoy it at all. It was just really slow. My form got sloppy. My form probably still is sloppy. <laughs> Training by heart rate is a fun way for me to get out, enjoy the trails, enjoy running long distance, and seeing the benefits is pretty awesome too. Now, being able to run an ultra marathon by just training using heart rate for a full year, that was an achievement that I was very proud of. And I know training using heart rate is a wonderful way for to have longevity in the sport and to try to keep the injuries at bay. And it just allows me to run longer. I, I like going out for, you know, a two hour run or even a three hour run. That's just, you know, it just brings a lot of happiness. How did you become vegan and stay vegan for as long as you have? Don't you worry about protein? I don't worry about getting enough protein in my diet. I really don't worry. I find that I recover extremely fast after long runs. I'm not sore. I have some food allergies that I have to think about. Gluten kind of gets me. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not celiac, but it does make me bloat. It makes me very uncomfortable. And I really don't like, you know, my skin on my elbows and on my knees and on my toes. It gets a little, I don't know, it gets a little dry, gets flaky. And I find that the more gluten I consume, the more wheat, bread and everything like that, it just makes my joints ache a lot more. I just seem to be more inflammation in my body. So that's one of the aspects I find about eating more plant-based. Also, when you're eating a lot of like junk food or when you're eating food out of the boxes, you don't really know what's in those. You don't really know what the ingredients are. It can be a little scary reading some of the labels because you can't even pronounce the words half the time. And so that kind of stuff, I just, you know, I just think it's just eating a plant-based diet just works much better for me because I don't have all that added sugar, all the other junk that comes along with it. When I eat a plant-based diet, I find that I am much happier. All my gut bacteria just seems to be, I don't know, happy gut bacteria. You know, you cut out all the processed food, all the sugar, uh, and basically you feed your body with, you know, good, healthy 
food. Like I like a lot of fermented foods like kimchi and you know pickles and sauerkraut. I love that kind of stuff. It's got a lot of good probiotics in it. Just eating more vegetables and fruits. It's, I don't know, makes me happy. I love those things. And then the nuts and seeds and the tofu and the tempeh and stuff like that for, for proteins, that, that also works well. So I am not deficient in any of those types of, uh, of things. I just kind of really enjoy the, the foods. Now, I'm a pretty basic eater. I don't really need to have these gourmet foods. You know, do I miss burgers? No, I'll have a Beyond Burger if I need one. I mean, I know it's processed and has a, you know, plant-based food, but still it's processed. So I try to limit, you know, my consumption of those now but here's the other thing like you all know for those of you that have been following me for a while you now I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit and started eating a lot of food that wasn't serving me and this year I made a very conscious decision to stay away from all the added sugars the processed foods uh, donuts and bagels and, and breads and stuff I've just pulled all of that out of my diet you know over the last month I haven't felt this good in a very long time and so, you know, eating a plant-based diet, I'm, I feel like I'm not deficient in anything. Now, again, it's not a, a diet for everybody, right? Like everybody should eat however they wish, right? This is just, you know, the, the, this is just my choices that I've gone down. And I know that a lot of meats, you know, they, uh, they don't, I don't know, I just feel so bloated after eating meat. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I just, I don't know, I've gotten to a point where I just don't like it. Will you ever run fast again, or are you just gonna continue to run nice and slow? I will run fast when the time comes. There will be times where I'm gonna go out and do a progression run, or I'm gonna get out there on the trail and just gonna bomb down the hills or whatever it is. Look, speed work for me, I don't really, well, I don't really enjoy it. I do, but I don't. But the one thing that I do know is that I will speed up using heart rate because that is a good guide. It's a good governor. It's a good way of me monitoring, you know, how fast I'm gonna go and how much output I have so I don't get injured. Cause man, I don't wanna get injured, it's not fun. And I'd rather be running all the time than not running, if you know what I mean. So yes, I'll run faster when I need to. I'll run faster in races, but I don't, I'm not gonna go out of my way and, and start doing track work just for the sake of doing track work. I'll do it when, a training, when my training plan calls for it. But for, like I said, most of my runs, it's gonna be slow and easy. And I, there may be a couple of tempo runs in there and progression runs and fart licks, but no more than 80, 20, man. That's just probably, you know, the most of what I would do. Is it hard being a YouTuber? If you're looking to make YouTube your way of living, like a full-time job, it can be very challenging. You have to do a lot of things right. And if you don't, you know, you may become burned out. You may become disillusioned. You may think that the, you know, that YouTube is against you. It's not promoting your videos and things like that. You know, one thing I have learned is you gotta make videos that people wanna watch. I mean, sure, I can go ahead and make a video on cats, but are any of you guys gonna watch my videos about cats? Probably not. You can't for running you came for training you came for me i guess <laughs> you came to see how i train follow my journey maybe you know you want to be inspired you know watching somebody else go through their trials and tribulations you know everyone kind of comes to my channel for different reasons right weight loss is it hard yeah it can be but it can also be rewarding because you know your comments really do help me kind of stay motivated and stay on track and i learn things from you guys when you post things out to me you know, I researched them <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. But yeah, so YouTube can be hard and sometimes you'll think that YouTube is against you. But the way I see it is make good quality content that people can either learn from, be entertained by, you know, you'll be okay. It just takes time. It's the long game. It's like a marathon. You don't become a instant YouTuber overnight. It kind of takes time. And considering I just kind of fell into this thing, you know, I wasn't planning on doing it you know, making all these YouTube videos, but I found it's helped me, and I've also found it's helped others, you know, go through the learning process of training and finding different ways of doing things. And what's the one thing that you would do differently if you were just starting out using the Malphitone method? Wow, that's a good one. You know, there's a lot of things I would probably do differently, but I guess the first one would be making sure that I had enough time to train using this method for the long haul, right? So give myself a good three months to see results without incorporating any, you know, speed training, anything like that. 
just give it the time of day it needs and let the compounded training uh, can, you know, compound and see the improvements. That would be the biggest thing if you were starting off using this method. But I'm going to throw something else in there and I'm going to say, you know, adjusting your expectations. Like, you know, every one of you are going to be coming from this from a different point of view. Some of you have been running for years. Some of you have just started out. Some of you are, have come back from an injury or some of you have lots of weight to lose. Look, everyone's different and everyone's heart rate's going to be different. You know, having coffee or not getting enough sleep or if you're under a lot of stress, that raises your heart rate. And that's going to be different from person to person. So, you know, making sure you don't compare yourself to others, I think, is uh, a good way of, a good healthy way of, of looking at this way of training using heart rate or mafetone or you know the Kavarvin method. What was your biggest challenge when you went plant-based? I would say my biggest challenge was cheese. That was the biggest thing to give up and to be quite honest it still is. You know have I had cheese you know in the past year? Yeah I absolutely have. Um, you know and when I do I just I feel it and I just I'm like ah oh, this is awful. I'm I, you know I bloat all over again and you know I hate dealing with this whole bloat when I eat and I know the triggers I know the foods right dairy gets me all the time gluten gets me eating meat makes me feel so sick so I just kind of stay away from all of those things now and and when I do fall off track or you know I do get cheese in some sort of meal you know either my wife forgets or my daughter you know makes me something and you know I don't know sometimes it gets in there one way or the other and uh, or sometimes it's just by me right like I'll kind of go off the deep end and get down to myself. That was last year. Uh, I get down to myself and, you know, I start doing all the things that I shouldn't be doing because I know better. I know what I know what happens to me. I know what my triggers are on my body. And those triggers can come in many different ways, right? They don't just have to be food related. They could be stress related. They could be just not feeling well and feeling sorry for myself. And I'll just dive into a bag of chips or stuff that doesn't serve me any benefits. So yeah that, it happens right like but you know i pick myself up the next day and i try to do better i try not to beat myself up because uh you know when you start beating yourself up you're not helping yourself in any way right you're just having a little bit of a pity party you're playing a victim it's it's tough you just got to kind of work around it and just know that the next day you know is a brand new day and look sometimes i treat every day like a video game right i got three laps breakfast lunch and dinner <laughs> right? And then it starts all over the next day. When am I going to run another half marathon? That's been uh, a very popular question over the last uh, year or so. And I'm going to say it's, it's this year, you know, this year I'd like to run another marathon. I think it would be really nice to do. And look, if you want to see what my goals are for the year, you can just click up above here and you'll see what all those goals are for the year. But yeah, I plan on running another marathon this year. Just want to focus on one thing at a time. And the first thing right now is I'm just trying to lose this darn weight. That's the biggest thing right now is weight loss. And it's working. If you had to pick a race, what would it be? 10K, half marathon, marathon. I would say I really like the half marathon distance. That is a, I don't know, that's something that I think most people can achieve. And it's a race that you can actually run fast right? You can still run a fast half marathon. I love 10 Ks as well. I think those are um, a good race to do. However, I do just like the longer race. I find 10 K. Yeah. You're, you're really running fast. Like it's, it's a different race altogether. But I find when you get up to that, that half marathon distance, it's a, it's a nice, sweet race that you can uh, do. Now, the other one is, is, you know, I would rather run an ultra marathon than a marathon. Uh, but right now, my, I'm not in the shape to run an ultra marathon. I find that ultra marathons really beat you up a lot. And I also find that the recovery takes quite a bit of time. And the problem with that is I like to run. And if I've done an ultra marathon, I, you know, you, you're going to not be running for a while. So you get that, you know, the, the marathon blues or the ultra marathon blues or whatever it is. And that really sucks i've also done a video on that in the past you can see that here but those are yeah i just don't like the running blues those suck so when you're not running sometimes it's worse than uh than running <laughs> if you know what i mean so yeah i would i think half marathon is a good distance that you could run um you know every weekend type of thing right like if you're trained enough for it so anyways that's my thoughts on that what type of weather do i like to run in if I had to pick a season 
If I had to pick one season to run in, what would it be? Well, it's kind of hard because once I've gotten through the transition into the particular season, I always find joy in running in all weather. Like right now, it's fantastic. I mean, it's right now it's minus four Celsius. There's hardly any wind and it's sunny. This right now would be very enjoyable to run in. You know, when it gets to the fall and it's like 10 degrees, I love that temperature as well. In the summer, when it gets really hot, I find it can be very challenging only because I want to run. Like I don't want to hike and I don't want to walk. I've done enough of that. I just want to run. So I find that in the summer, my heart rate starts to get too high just in the past year where I, you know, it was hard to kind of run it, right? Like you're, anyways, it just is what it is. Yeah, and the spring is good too, but it's, spring's dirty, right? Like all the snow is melted. There's salt and sand and dirt and everything looks so gross. But in wintertime, it looks beautiful, right? Like it's all this great looking scenery around. This actually just puts a big smile on my face. I just don't like driving in it when it's like a snowstorm, that's all. So it's hard for me to say which season I like the most, but if I had to pick, I would say the fall. You know, autumn is a great time to run. There's a lot of races that are running around that time. The temperature is perfect if you're using heart rate training. But again, if you're racing, you don't really care about, you know, running slow, you wanna race. <laughs> so you just kinda leave heart rate training a little bit behind and you run a little bit faster, right? So what would you, what would I prefer? Running on the trails or the road? Oh, that's a little challenging, but I would say I would prefer to be on the trails. I would prefer to be in nature. However, if I'm really paying attention to my Maffetone training or heart rate training, I would rather be on the roads or a little bit on the trails and roads as long as it's all runnable because then I can actually see my improvements with my heart rate and I would be running all the time. If I was on the trails, I wouldn't be doing a whole lot of running uphill. <laughs> I'd be running the flats and the downhills so, but being in nature to me is, is number one. It's just, there's nothing quite like it to be quite honest. Does my wife run? And if she doesn't, why? Well, <laughs> I have tried over the years to get her to run. But the one thing that I have realized is you can't get people to do something that they just don't want to do. Everybody has their own interests. My wife loves to ride horses. My wife loves to hike. My wife loves to do yoga. She does those things. <laughs> Everybody's different and I'm not here to try to force my wife or my daughter or anyone to do something that they don't wanna do. If they decide that they wanna go, if they decide that they wanna start running, then so be it, that's great. I'll, I'll, help, uh, I'll help them, I'll support them. But I won't you know, try to make them do something they just don't wanna do. I'm more of the type of person to actually do the sport I love to do. And if people see how it's benefiting me and you know how much I enjoy it, and they decide that that's something that they wanna do, then that's great because it inspires them to, to take on a sport that I love. And w would I run with them if they decided to? Yeah, absolutely. But there's still gonna be times where I'm gonna be the lone wolf and I, I would run by myself that's a great way for me to clear my head. Does anybody help you come up with the titles for your videos or the video ideas? No, <laughs> no, nobody else. I'm the only one who is my team. <laughs> I don't have anybody. I am the editor. I am the actor. I am the narrator. I am the graphic design artist. I am, did I say the editor? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much everybody. Um, yeah, it takes a while to come up with an idea and then to put it in action, to then to find the time to film it, to make it fun and interesting. There's just kind of a lot that goes into it. So no, it's just me. It's just, I'm the only one on my team and this is just what I do. What are three qualities that define you that you are proud of? Wow, it's a little bit of a loaded question. Um, I would say that I am proud of my honesty. Uh, I am proud, I would say that I'm a kind individual and my integrity. You know, I guess those would be the three 
things that I would be, you know, most proud of, right? My dad always said, you know, if you, you know, be kind, be honest, and have integrity, you'll be okay in life. And I've always, you know, did my best to strive towards those. And uh, yeah, I would say those are the, the three qualities I would say are, you know, I'm most proud of about myself. How fast, how fast do you think you'll be able to run a half marathon in if you continue training using the Maftone method? I honestly think if I continued to train this way, I could probably, I don't know, I could probably get it down to maybe an hour and 30 minutes, maybe. I mean, I'm, it's kind of very optimistic, but this is certainly one way to find out, right? Just give it a try. What else? What else do I have? I don't have anything to lose, right? So why not? I'm training this way. I may as well see where it's going to lead me.